Hello everyone! Um, today I'm going to talk to you about the group by function and how we can use this to aggregate data using count, sum, average, min, max and having. Uh, there are other aggregate functions available but as uh, in my opinion these are not as commonly used. I won't cover these today. Uh, I will however paste a link to the Microsoft Docs article in the description for further reading if you're interested. So we're going to use the wide world importers again and we'll use the orders table to see how these functions work because I think it's quite a good real world example of when you'd need to use these. So we'll start with count and if I wanted to work out how many orders are in the orders table I can do this by typing select count star from wide world importers .sales .orders, and that will tell us here how many records we've got in the table, which is awesome. But if I wanted to see this count by the orders each customer had placed, then I would need to add to this by including the customer ID. So we'll just pop this in here at the front there. And we've got the count star here, and I've just called that column CT there, just so that we can see the name of it there. And then we need to add the group by function at the end. So I'm going to say here group by customer ID. And if I run this now, that will show us the count of records per customer ID. So we can see here customer ID 1 has had 129 orders, customer ID 2 has had 123 orders, and so on. So we can also add an order by on here um, to order by column one if we wanted to order by. So we can order that there by the customer ID or if we wanted to order it by the count then we can just change that to two here and we can also do this in descending order if we wanted to, just like we saw in the last tutorial. So that's now ordered by the customer IDs with the highest number of orders. Okay. It's important to notice that count star will count each row that customer ID exists in, whereas if we wanted to count by a specific column, it ignores the nulls. Um, so we can see this here, if I choose a column which I know has nulls in, like, um, picked by person ID here and if I just add this in picked by person ID if I just add this into the query here we can see here that these two columns are not always equal um, if we pick a customer with a low number of these we can just have a look here And if I run these two together, we can see here that we're expecting a row total of nine, but only eight with a picked by person ID. And if we look here where we've picked this customer out and we're looking at the data for it, we can see that we do have the nine records, but we only have eight with a picked by person ID because we do have this null here. So we can further expand on this if we wanted to count the distinct number of records in a field we can just write the word distinct here count this. just before the field name and within the count brackets and that will tell us um, how many unique picked by person IDs there are per customer reference. So if I run this here if we scroll down and look for our customer again, it's telling us here that we've got two unique values here. So if I run this again, we can have a look here that within this field there are only two unique values. Um, and that's what we get here because it does uh, exclude nulls at this point. So in the same way as the order by, select, etc. statements, if we want to group by multiple fields, um, we can do this by just putting a comma 
in between the statements here. So we've added picked by person ID into the group by and also into the select statement before the count and this will enable us to see the count of distinct combinations of these. So if I run this here we can see that there are six different picked by person IDs but per customer ID and if I filter by our customer ID here this will make it a lot easier for you to see here. So we can see there that for customer 1061 we've got one null picked by person ID, two ten picked by person ID and six eighteen picked by person's ID. Another cool thing that we can add on to count is the having clause at the end. So if, for example, we only wanted to see customers who have had, say, more than 100 orders, um, we can just write having, having count greater than 100 here at the end. And then this will now show, show us only customers that have had more than 100 orders. So this is really useful if you're wanting to find um, like duplicates in a column, for example, like customer names where they appear more than once. So you would search for the customer name, count star, and then group by name having count greater than one. And you can see, uh, well, it will show you there which of them are duplicates, which is something that I personally find that quite useful. So moving on from count, let's have a look at the min and max functions because they're pretty useful too. So if I wanted to know, for example, the minimum and maximum order IDs per table, then I could just write in here min and max around the order ID and run this for the wide world importers orders table and it will tell us here that the minimum order ID is one and the maximum is here. So if I wanted to know by customer what their first order was and what their last order was then if I just nick that from here I just add in my customer ID group by and this will tell us here that customer ID 1, their first order was order number 2934 and their maximum order was 73290. So that's kind of useful there. You can also use this for dates. So if you wanted to find the earliest and latest order date per customer, um, you can just swap your order ID to order date and paste that here and it will then show us the earliest and latest order date per customer as well which is pretty handy. So tagging on to the min and max functions I find it really useful um, when I need to know what the max string length of a virtual field is to use the len function combined with the max function. So I'll just show you the len function in use here. So if we get the customers table and let's get rid of all that because we don't need to know any of it. And if I just write len and then bracket that around the customer name, this will then show us the length of each of these strings within this varchar field here. And what we can then do is we can write, I'll get rid of these as well. I can write max len customer name and that will then tell us there that the maximum length um, of any of the strings stored within that field is 38 um, and if we wanted to know which customer that belongs to we can then do let's go select star from here where customer where len of customer name equals 38 because we know that the maximum one is 38 characters. We are basically asking SQL there, give us all of the records here where the length of the customer name is 38. And it will give us these three here 
So we know that all of these three customer names are 38 characters. Um, this does become quite useful, I think, when you're building front ends or you're trying to work out what the maximum um, string length that are stored in your varchar fields are. So it's pretty cool, right? So to cover average and sum, I think we will use a table with some financial data in uh, because that's generally what I would use these functions for. So looking over here at the customer transactions table, um, probably use the transaction amount table here. So if I just type here, average, and then we'll have sum of transaction amount. And if I run that there, that will now tell us the average of all of the transactions in the table and the sum of all of the transactions in the table. So again, if I want to split this by customer, I'll put my customer ID in there and then we'll group by the customer ID. And that will then now tell us the average and sum per customer. So if we wanted to prove this, for example, we again will just pick a customer and we'll just say select start from here where customer ID equals, let's go with the top one. And if I just run that copy this into trusty old Excel. That will tell us here that the average is here and the sum is here. So let's go back to Z equals run that again. And if I put these together next to each other, we can see here that the average and the sum match there. So I am glad that SQL can calculate that correctly. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. We're getting the same results. Yay! If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like and subscribe to the channel and feel free to add any comments below. Uh, it would be great to know how you use these functions um, and also if there's anything in particular you'd like me to cover for future tutorials then just let me know there. Uh, the next tutorial in this series will cover how we join tables together and the different types of joins that there are. So thank you for watching. <laughs>